Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice, beautiful day out, isn't it? Uh, Rainy. <laughs> well, we got uh, quite a bit of stuff to do this morning. So let's see. Is everybody comfortable with the heat? The heater just shut off. It really puts out a lot of heat. The net always migrates that way, but the heat comes on. It moves towards the heat. I have to just watch her and follow where the heat is. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's why I felt the fire side room. Nice and warm in here. Sometimes we've actually had a fire in here. There you go. Well, I got a couple of announcements. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Throw in the towel. Yeah. <laughs> Surrender. What happened? We have a just coffee that's been on. Just a little bit. We're still. washing the table. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know we got a couple of Baptists back there, and so just see the water flying, right. and now they know, okay, that's what's going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, that's Be careful. Okay, well, uh, this coming April 17th, I think that's a, a Sunday, we're going to be doing a uh, outreach, kind of a remote Bible chef. Remember, uh, it was a couple months ago, went over to Cypress Place, took everything over to Cypress Place, and did a presentation to all the group over there. Uh, April 17th, I'm going to be taking everything over to Sunshine House, and that's in Thousand Oaks, and be doing a presentation over there. So there won't be any class here. If anybody would like to go over there and see what's going on, you're welcome to do it. If you want to help, that's great too. So I'll be on the website, you can watch it from there too. <coughs> Care about that. Um, Steve, some of them will be up at the retreat, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have it all in the bulletin, too. It's in Nixon. Let's see. That's what's that? no, April. April 17th, I think, is the double check here. Three weeks. Yeah. Uh, plenty of notice. week, um, my conversation with Richard uh, Trejo over at KEAR. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah. Not as loud today because we're having some problems with uh, with the, um, the amplifier. I'm not sure what happened to it. <laughs> That's a problem when you don't have it. But, uh, um, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, talk with um, Richard over there at KDAR, and the Bible Chef's going to put on a program. He's going to put on their schedule in June. Be prayer about that. It's very exciting and uh, a little overwhelming for me. You know, someone starts talking about plans like that. He's moving from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Turning your feelings and everything else. Yeah. Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Got to stay humble. <laughs> Anyways, it is, it is exciting, though, and so be in prayer about that, and have any suggestions about uh, what we can do on that, I'm always open to it, so. Uh, let's see, what else we got going here? So many things. Oh, Project Canyon Child. There was a stabbing of one of the orphans. I uh, got an email from uh, the pastor there, working with me, on Project Canyon Child, and uh, one of the orphans was stabbed, they had to do a treatment um, for uh, emergency surgery. He's in critical condition, my understanding, but uh, is uh, stable. And so I'll be in prayer about that. And if you're interested in any uh, of the activities that's going on with that program, please either contact me or it's on the website. And um, uh, any of the, the funding that you want to forward to them, uh, contact me. And I'll let you know how to take care of that. And I think uh, so far, uh, John, uh, have you been able to keep count of how many Bibles that uh, we've been able to get to the oh orphans? Oh my gosh, no. It's been oh, it's They had a, a big Bible blitz in all of Kenya about the first of the month, and I don't have any idea how many might have been handed out. They're trying to hand out a couple hundred thousand throughout the country, and how many you got yeah. to uh, Project Kenyan Child, I don't know. Yeah, well, I know, I know all the orphans so, that wanted one got one, yeah. and we channeled at least 250 through that program. So that was really exciting.
happy to see them take not only all the orphans got it, but it went out because all the orphans were acting as small uh, distributors as well. So that was really exciting to see it, it work that way. So a couple hundred of them at least I know went through that. And of course, you're interested in, in following any of the information on that. Again, it's on the website. You can contact me and contact John. He knows all about that. He's the main guy with the Gideons. Okay, that's about all the announcements I have. Um, and when it comes to Project Kenya Child, and also it's also known as Cookie for Kenny Kids, I kind of like that one myself. <laughs> uh, um, if you ever have any, any uh, questions about it, please uh, feel free to contact me. Um, today we have a, um, a Jewish Egyptian entree. Now, this one is a little more complex than some of the other ones that I have made, but it incorporates both of the cultures. Now, why would we do something like that? Why would we have both cultures in there? What's going on in the book of Exodus? The Jewish people are, are what? Yeah, they're with the Egyptian people, aren't they? So that you can see how that would occur. That when they're pulled apart, they're still going to take their culture with them. And their last culture was with the Egyptians, wasn't it? And so when when the uh, uh, Jewish people were spread out, like when we're, as we're studying in Isaiah, and they're dispersed, and they're in these different countries, but they're going to pick up the foods that are there, wouldn't they? So this is kind of representative of that. All right, so <coughs> we've got oh, just a real quick thing here on last week's uh, last week's stew. I went ahead and I put everything in here for you. It was the stew last week. But I did kind of modify a couple of things. Uh, number one, I modified the amount of chili pepper. It's my disciple neighbor, you can always put in more. And the other thing I modified is, traditionally they put the rice on the bottom. If you put the rice on the bottom like that, you're just gonna have a big thick layer of rice on the bottom. And pretty much it's pretty dense. What I suggest you do, and I wrote it in here, is that make the rice separate and then mix it in at the end. This one, okay, with this one you've got quite a bit of ingredients. You've got basic matzah, you're going to use uh, chicken stock, a whole variety of spices. This is so dramatic. I mean, this thing's going to sing hallelujah to you before you even start with it because it's got all spices, it's got cinnamon. It's got uh, uh, terribly old. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got you got um, parsley and cilantro in there. You're gonna have some uh, onions and garlic. Now, you also can make this with a hot, spicy uh, Egyptian sauce. And that's a whole other step in itself, a whole other process in itself. So I'm going to give it to you traditionally, and, but I also put the sauce on the, on the website, so you've got the sauce as well. So the chili powder, that's, uh, that's put into the sauce, and uh, the cumin's put in there as well, and the vinegar, all that stuff is in the sauce. I didn't give you the sauce this time, just the stuff, just the, uh, the entree itself. So you've got um, um, uh, coriander, you got cinnamon, you got your allspice in there, and the uh, parsley, cilantro, onions, and, and garlic. And I always chop all that fresh. <coughs> Buy a lot of that separate, uh, already made. And uh, I always like to put it all in fresh for you. Now the, the process of doing this particular recipe is... You're going to chop up your onions, and you're going to chop up your um, um, garlic, and you're going to saute them. You're going to saute them in a little bit of the, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, olive oil. You can use any kind of oil, though. You want to stay you know, traditional, you can go with the olive oil. Once those are sautéed for a couple of minutes, you're going to start to add your chicken. Now, the chicken in this is um, usually they just.
just use a whole chicken, but I don't use a whole chicken for the class because I like to all of you have nice tender meat. So I use I use about a pound and three quarters of uh, fillets of breast, and those are poached for about uh, about 45 minutes, and then some boiling water. You let it cool off, and chop it up. Now, once you're stuck with sauté, you're going to put the, the chopped meat into that. You're going to also add your uh, cilantro and your parsley and your spices. And you let it cook for just a few minutes. Now you're just letting it cook long enough so the flavors will start to start to smell. And the onions will start to just start to turn translucent. And you can kind of push that to the side. Then you're going to take your baking dish and you're going to take a uh, couple of sheets of the matzah. Now I think if I was going to do this a way that would seem more practical, I would crumble them all up. You know, kind of make it just kind of a crumbly mass, and then put them in. You're gonna. What the recipe recommends is that you uh, save the uh, stock from your chicken. Now, when you boil or poach, when you poach anything, what happens with the water? Who's poached eggs? They throw it away. No, but look. If you just take the eggs down and you look at the water, what does it look like? Dirty dishwater. Well, yeah, it looks kind of like a dishwater because it's got a scum on the top and it's not, and it's still kind of translucent, kind of a thin, milky looking color. It doesn't look like good stock because the, 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 what makes the stock is actually the uh, fats that would come out of the meat. Well, if, you, if you've got a chicken that's already been skinned and boned and it's just the flesh, you're not going to get a whole lot of fats out of it that'll make good stock. So I went ahead and stock. So you get a good stock. All right, so you would take the, take the matzah and you put it in the stock. Then you line the, the, uh, the bowl with it after you spray it with a, an oil or just uh, cover it with a little bit of oil. Um, you put the matzah in there that's soaked. And in this case, I put sheets of it. After that, you're going to put your um, uh, stuff that was in the pan, the, uh, the chicken and the uh, spinach that's in the pan. Now the spinach, that was added at the end, and that is a frozen spinach. Now I let this sit out over here. <coughs> so it's all nice and still cold, but it starts to come apart real easily. I don't know why they like frozen spinach. All of these Jewish recipes always say eat frozen spinach. I refresh myself. But they said frozen, so I'm making it traditional for you. Put that in there, you mix it up uh, together, then you just put in a layer, then you pour over stock, you put in the rest, you pour over stock, then you put the rest of the matzo on it, pour over stock, put it in the oven for 30 minutes. And then you can make your, your hot sauce. So it's quite labor intensive. So be my server today. The volunteers, huh? Yeah, you trying to draft somebody? Yeah, we got some volunteers. <laughs> Is this an all ladies thing no, back no. here? Come on. We're just counting right now to see how small these pieces have to be. Oh my gosh. Twenty. <laughs> Consider your group a, uh, a missionary group. <laughs> oh, for the U.S. Center for Women? Yeah. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. 